How you doing? Jason Cott from ASP.NET Tutorial Zone here. Today we have another vlog in the ASP.NET Tutorial Series. In the category of Before You Start, in the topic of What is .NET, and this is Part 2, which is the evolution of .NET. .NET has evolved substantially since it was first introduced. It started out as what would be a Java clone and became a much more powerful and full-blown platform. It has a lot of capabilities that were added that make life as a programmer very, very simple in the Microsoft world. However, it still does suffer from one major artifact of its creation, and that is that it was an evolution rather than a revolution. .NET, when it first came out, was an evolution in the tech space in that it really didn't offer you that much more than Java. And ever since then, .NET, with each new release, has been adding a little bit more functionality every single time. And an argument can be made that after several major releases that they actually have rewritten a lot of the .NET framework. However, I would argue that Microsoft's strategy in the first place is to not leave their developers behind, thus you'll notice VB.NET exists. And because of that strategy, they never really could rewrite things 100% the way that maybe it would make the most sense. So as you learn .NET, you may run into a couple of things that don't quite make sense the way that they are, but that the reason that it's that way is often because of an artifact of a previous release or previous version or previous way of thinking. Now one other thing to know about .NET is that even though in its first versions it was promoted as an open standard that could be used by other companies and other platforms and other operating systems, .NET really is a Windows based platform. There are projects out there that bring some of this functionality to other platforms, like being able to run it on Linux with the Mono platform. But you have to understand that the piece that was the standard that Microsoft was saying could be used elsewhere was only about 25% of the usefulness of .NET, and that everything else they own 100%. So really, if you're going to be running .NET, if you're going to be programming in .NET, you are in the Windows world, and there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. However, after paying that cost of admission, you do get a lot done for you, and you can actually program a lot of things in a very little amount of time. So back to the evolution of .NET, some of the examples of some things that were released over time in the evolution of .NET is um, how they took the .NET remoting from version 2.0 and 1.1, and they turned it into WCF, which is a much more powerful and very robust communication framework. Then there's Link and the Entity Framework, which were released with .NET 3.5. And 4.0 came out with a lot of cool features for parallel computing. So as you're learning .NET, keep in mind that the platform has evolved substantially and is extremely robust now. However, it is still a work in progress and will continue to evolve over the years. If you'd like to know more on what we just talked about, there's only so much I can say in a couple of minutes, so check out the full article in the link below the video. Also, if you'd like to see more videos like this one, please like and subscribe. Thanks for your support, and I'll talk to you soon.